everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a 2011 F-150 with a 3.5 EcoBoost. You remember I did a turbo on that one. This is a different truck. This truck I had in, I don't know, three months ago, four months ago. And it came in, and the guy had to jump the starter relay to get the thing started. And it wouldn't shift. It was stuck in limp mode, whatever gear it was in. So I checked that out and I needed a piece called the lead frame down inside the transmission. I replaced that, everything was fine. Then it came back, same problem as before. But the coolant temperature or the transmission temperature wasn't moving. Uh, it came back in, it wasn't right away either, it took a little while. And it kept going into limp mode. But let me show you something. So there you could see transmission temperature. Now that gauge was staying stuck on zero or cold. So I checked it out and I found that somebody had done something to the wiring harness from where it plugs into the transmission and goes up and over and I found some wiring that had been kind of butchered. I fixed that wiring, straightened that problem out. At that same point, I don't know if I mentioned it, it was also going into limp mode occasionally. So now it comes back. So a grand total of three months later. Exact same problem as before, is what I'm told. I don't know about you, that makes me mental when somebody says that. Exact same problem as before. Really? Okay, what's it doing? And then they tell you, and it's like, that's not even close to the same problem as before. So now, they had a video, and they showed me a video check engine light you could, they were showing the cluster and you could see on this see the gear pattern right there that would show us one two three four five six as you're driving you'll watch see it's in first but it's actually in drive you'll watch it change let me just go down i'm in my secret testing facility here in mexico see second third So you can see in the video that it keeps downshifting. But you can watch the speedometer continue to go up. However, the check engine light's flashing during this whole time. So I'm like, okay, dude, you got a misfire. The motor's not making power, so it's downshifting to try to accelerate. How is that exactly the same problem as before? Like I said, that is one of my pet peeves. That's the one thing that just drives me crazy. So, anyway, let me just show you here real quick with the scanner what I got. So, oops, here, cylinder 5, misfire, 109, and cylinder 6 is 0. Cylinder 1 is at a 9. Okay, so, but it's got codes for cylinder 1 and 5. And under load, I can feel it. Uh, codes menu, yep. So let's go to memory codes, and I want to show you something else. So we got random misfire detector, PO300. Uh, cylinder 1 detected 301. Cylinder 5 detected 305. And a 731. Gear ratio error in first. When I did the lead frame, that piece inside the transmission... I said, you may wind up needing a transmission. You know, we're doing, we got to do this repair, but I don't know if any damage was done with whatever happened to this thing beforehand. Um, somebody had worked on this and kind of messed a few things up in the process. And I think it might have been the same person that messed with the wiring harness that I didn't see when I did the lead frame because that was external on the transmission. I just, I had to follow the harness and that's when I found it. Um, I don't know if I made a video on either one of those. I don't recall, but whatever. So, but yeah, exact same problem as before, not even close. So let's get back to, let's get this back to the shop and I gotta see if I can't figure out what the misfire is. The gear ratio error in first, I'm actually not gonna worry about that just yet. Um, is it possible the misfire is so severe that it's creating a problem there? Anything's possible where the transmission is expecting to see whatever the input versus output is and because the misfire is so severe, it's skewing the output. It's, it's very possible we're skewing the input. 
So it's very possible that that's creating the issue. So I'm not gonna address that yet. I wanna address the misfire first. However, that I bring it to the customer's attention, hey, you have this. So as we said before, when we did the lead frame, you could have a transmission problem. So guess what? You could still have a transmission problem. So, all right, let me get back to the shop. All right, so back in the shop now. Um, here's the motor, and I gotta take this engine cover. One is over on this side, and the way forward goes is one, two, three, four, five, six. So five is in the middle on that side. I'm willing to bet this is a uh, ignition coil or a spark plug. Just judging by the way the misfire hits when you're driving, I mean, it comes in harsh, uh, and then it goes away. Usually that's a coil-related thing. I have seen injectors do that, but it's kind of rare. Um, usually you go with you know the common stuff first, the tune-up stuff, because that's usually what creates it. So let's get this cover off, and then let's look at that. All right, so to get this cover off, I've got to take the fill cap off. And the thing I've always hated about that is, a lot of times when you have to take the fill cap off, you'll wind up getting dirt and debris down there if you're not careful. All right. Now on this, this thing has a high pressure pump with a cover. You gotta take the cover off, the insulation cover, which is already falling apart. Nothing, nothing I can do about that. And down there, you see the coils. So, I'm gonna have to pop them out. I'm not sure if I can get this camera in a position for you to actually watch me. Let me see. What if I keep you there? Does that work? Uh, doesn't seem like I can get you where I want you. No, not in a good spot at least. All right, let's see how that works out. All right, hang on while I get uh, some tools. All right, let's knock this coil out of here. itself doesn't look bad from a visual. Well, let's get in there and pull the spark plug out. Um, in fact, I gotta find my spark plug socket. Hang on. All right, so let's get the plug out. Here is my extra long spark plug socket, my 5.8. I'll see if I can put a link in the description for this. This is actually a snap-on. You don't need a snap-on for home. install a plug with this with a uh, ratchet like this all right here's an issue all right see that that's called carbon tracking whenever you see something like that replace the plug and the boot which means the coil on this thing because what happens is even if you clean that up it's still there you'll never get rid of it so I bet you that's the entire problem. Now the cylinder one misfire that it's having, I bet you it's just residual because cylinder five is misfiring, it's just kicking the cylinder one. That's gonna be my guess. So let me get this going. Now if you look really close, I'm sorry, I know the camera's bobbling a little bit. If you look really close, you could see that ground strap. Come on, focus on that. Eh, it's not focusing on that. But you can see, yeah, there you can see it. The ground strap itself is wearing away. So I'm gonna get a set of plugs and one coil for this. Okay, so after a bit of a discussion with the customer who still swears it's the same problem as before, and us telling him, no, it's not the same problem as before, he gave us the okay to do the job. Um, I just, I don't understand how people can't correlate the two, but whatever. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's put the plugs in. Well, actually, let's get the old plugs out. All right. So, fortunately, like I said, I don't know if I can get a better view of this. Let me shut that light off. 
Let me try something real. No, it's not going to work. I, don't, I can't do it that way. Okay. I was thinking of putting a tripod up in the engine bay, but it's not going to work. All right. from the other truck, taking these pipes out of the way should help. Just to gain access to the coil. Uh, I have to disconnect it. <coughs> Sorry if my shoulder's in the way. Nothing I can do about that. Cylinder five, I was able to leave in place the coil. And it's funny because that's the one I have to replace. Yeah, not terrible, but they are worn. Let me move you over here, maybe. I don't know how well you're going to see in there. There's an electrical connector here for the high pressure pump. You're going to have to disconnect that. Disconnect that, get that out of the way. down bolt out and I stick them up on the cowl and pop the coil out and this one won't come out either. You know come out with the harness attached. Okay. A little difficult. Do not put these plugs in, or never put plugs in with a gun. I'm just asking for trouble if you do. All right. Yeah, same thing with that plug. Not great, not terrible. Definitely been changed at some point. These are these are Ford plugs. I one, I guess the dealer must have changed them because this thing's got 200,000 miles on it. Um, all right. Let's get these new plugs ready, and we're going to throw these plugs in. All right, so we got the new plugs, and you see I put a dab of copper paste on there. That copper paste, I had actually gotten that in a little tube that came with a, an O2 sensor, and I've been using the same tube now for a whole ton of these things, so you don't have to use a lot. Here's the old plug. See the gap? Close enough. I know that's going to irritate some of you. But like I've said in the past, the gap is not as critical as some of you think it is. Now people will say, oh, it's got to be at 45. I have to put it to 45. It's got to be to 45. Well, guess what? If it's at 43, you're never going to notice the difference. On an old car that had points ignition, yeah, you would probably notice a difference. On today's cars, especially the cop designs, that this is a cop design, coil unplug, you'll never notice. So. Again, I'm sure my shoulder's in the way. And all I'm doing is screwing down a plug. Now, sure, I can be an animal and I can use the ratchet to do it, the, um, the electric ratchet, but I'm not about to do that. Because that's how you screw stuff up. You can cross thread it. Ah, you can cross thread it. You can um, break a plug, not even realize it. I've seen people do it. Now these are taper fit, so this isn't one of those where it gets tight and go a quarter turn. 
where it's a taper fit plug. You put it in, get it tight, you're done. Now yes, there's a torque spec. I went with the German torque spec, good and tight. Don't over tighten it, you don't have to go bananas. I've been doing this long enough. All right. So that coil is in. <coughs> Let me just tighten up the little bolt that holds it down. I do not know if you can see any of this. But you get the general idea. Now you're going into a brass insert into a plastic valve cover. There again, when you saw me tighten that, you don't have to go crazy tightening it. Don't drop the plug down the hole either. That's another big mistake I see people do. They'll actually drop the whole socket down inside there. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that and people close up the gap on the plug doing so. So like I said, this thing calls for 45. You know, if the plug was at 50, 55, 40, 35, it'd be fine. You, you'll never notice a difference at all. If you closed it down to 20 or less, yeah, then maybe you'll start to notice a difference. So hence me just eyeballing it. It's fine. Okay. So that's snug in place. Let me disconnect this coil. Is this the coil we're replacing? I have a brand new Motorcraft coil for it. It's just a couple of dollars more for the factory piece. I'd much rather use a factory piece for peace of mind, too. Okay, so down in place. Get the connector on. There we go. Clicked, I got the little lock on. Not going nowhere. All right, last plug on this side. And you saw I placed it down the hole up to the point where I could catch the threads. Like I said, do not drop it. I uh, used to do side work, not side work, but I used to moonlight at a shop, and. Um, I would constantly get Hondas in, and they would tell me, oh, the guy, Wayne, he tuned it up today. He goes, and now it's got a misfire. You know, can you take a look at it? Every single time I got to the cars, it was the same thing. He would drop the spark plugs down the hole with the socket, and he would close up the gap. It's like, if you do it so many times, you think you would know, hey, stop doing that. You never learned. So I fixed a whole bunch of his where he did that. Let's move to the other side. There's really nothing special. It's exactly the same as this side. So what's the point in watching me do this side? It's exactly the same thing. So, and you can see somebody already changed the middle coil on that one. So I'm just going to do this side. I'm not going to bother filming it. If I come across something interesting or whatever, then I'll show you on that side. But let's do that and let's get this done. Okay, so I got the three plugs out of the other side. This is one. 
cylinder one, and you can see the electrode is, or the grounding strap rather, is worn. But I did look at the body of the plug and everything looks fine, so I'm not concerned about the coil or anything else. All right, let's get the new ones in place. All right, <clears throat> so all the plugs are in, that's all good. Put the engine cover back on. Almost forgot to hook this tube back up on this side. Gotta take the oil cap off. Really can't stand that design. There's so many manufacturers use it today. That's all down in place. All right, let's get my scanner and let's take this thing for a road test. Sounds good. All right. well, I tell you what, <clears throat> even though those plugs didn't look all that bad, it's got way more power than it did before. I can definitely feel it. And I'm not used to driving this truck. So for me to actually feel a difference right away, and, and that cylinder five was really only misfiring under load, and I'm not feeling that right now. So, okay, let me continue the road test. Let me make sure it gets nice and hot, and we'll go from there. So far, so good on the road test. The truck runs great. Considering it's got 221,000 miles on it, this thing runs fantastic. Um, yeah, the power is like definitely way better than it was before, and. Like I said, that cylinder 5 didn't feel like it was missing all that bad before. I mean, yes, it was under hard acceleration, but just general driving, I didn't notice it at first until I really got on it. And, I mean, yeah, it's, it accelerates good. And it has no misfires on the, on the um, scanner. So, all right, I'm on my way back to the shop. Let's do that and let's finish this up. I just got back to the shop here. And as you can see, cylinder five misfires zero. Cylinder one, zero. So it's all good. Now, I, I, I mean, I can understand when a customer feels like, oh, they had a similar issue or whatever, but I just, it just makes me mental when they come in and say, it's the exact same problem as before. No, not even close. But I guess I can understand it. You know, people get irritated having to have their cars fixed multiple times. But the three times it's been in, it's been three different issues. So, you know, obviously I never touched the motor. The first two times, yes, it was transmission related, but one time was internal to the transmission. The second time was external to the transmission, and it was something that somebody else had done. So, whatever. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. And like I said, I'm going to see if I can find a link for um, a long extension or a long style uh, spark plug socket because I actually need one for myself at home. I don't have one at home. So I had taken one from work, brought it home. So uh, let me see if I can get that and I'll put that in there. All right. Just look down in the description. All right. Hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.